Hi, friends. I'm Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. So each month we'll read all four books. We are halfway through, well, all four books, technically, since we're reading them in chronological order. So we're not reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John this month. We are reading them as the stories actually happen. So it means that every day, just about when a story appears in more than one of the Gospels. We're reading from all four books, particularly today. It's everybody. We got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So if you want to grab the reading plan so you can look along as you are listening along, go to AnnieFDowns.com slash Gospels. That's also where you'll get the Let's Read the Gospels guidebook. So each day I'm telling you the scripture references here at the start and the stories are the main themes will hit. Then as I read, I'll tell you the headings. And if the story is in more than one gospel, I'll tell you which gospel as I go. So today is March 15th, day 15, and I'll be reading Mark 9, 33 to 37. Mark 18, 1 through 6, Luke 9, 46 to 48, Mark 9, 38 to 41, Luke 9, 49 to 50, Mark 9, 42 to 50, Matthew 18, 7 through 10, Matthew 18, 12 to 35, John 7, 1 to 9, Luke 9, 51 to 56, Matthew 8, 18 to 22, Luke 9, 57 to 62, and John 7, 10 through 53. You may notice there is no Matthew 18, 11. Some translations do have one. The one we are reading, the New Living Translation, does not have Matthew 18, 11. Today, we are going to hear Jesus telling a bunch of stories and talking with his disciples, and I think you're going to love it. So as I mentioned, the translation I'm reading from this month is the New Living Translation. This is day 15 in chronological order. The greatest in the kingdom from Mark. After they arrived at Capernaum and settled in a house, Jesus asked his disciples, what were you discussing out on the road? But they didn't answer because they'd been arguing about which of them was the greatest. He sat down, called the 12 disciples over to him and said, whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. Then he put a little child among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also my Father who sent me. In Matthew. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. From Luke. Then his disciples began arguing about which of them was the greatest. But Jesus knew their thoughts, so he brought a little child to his side. Then he said to them, anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me also welcomes my Father who sent me. Whoever is the least among you is the greatest. Using the name of Jesus from Mark. John said to Jesus, teacher, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons, but we told him to stop because he wasn't in our group. Don't stop him, Jesus said. No one who performs a miracle in my name will soon be able to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you even a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I tell you the truth, that person will surely be rewarded. From Luke, John said to Jesus, Master, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons, but we told him to stop because he isn't in our group. But Jesus said, don't stop him. Anyone who is not against you is for you. From Mark. But if you cause one of these little ones who trusts in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone hung around your neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand than to go into the unquenchable fires of hell with two hands. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better to enter eternal life with only one foot than to be thrown into hell with two feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. It's better to enter the kingdom of God with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the maggots never die and the fire never goes out. For everyone will be tested with fire. 
salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other. From Matthew, what sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin? Temptations are inevitable, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both of your hands and feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly father. Story of the lost sheep. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others on the hills and go out to search for the one that is lost? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice over it more than over the 99 that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my heavenly father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. Correcting a fellow believer. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won the person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. I also tell you this. If two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Story of the Unforgiving Debtor Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Jesus and his brothers. After this, Jesus traveled around Galilee. He wanted to stay out of Judea, where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death. But soon it was time for the Jewish festival of shelters. And Jesus' brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, where your followers can see your miracles. You can't become famous if you hide like this. If you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers didn't believe in him. Jesus replied, Now is not the right time for me to go, but you can go anytime. The world can't hate you, but it does hate me because I accuse it of doing evil. You go on. I'm not going to this festival because my time has not yet come. After saying these things, Jesus remained in Galilee. Opposition from Samaritans. As the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He sent messengers ahead to a Samaritan village to prepare for his arrival. But the people of the village did not welcome Jesus because he was on his way to Jerusalem. When James and John saw this, they said to Jesus, Lord, should we call down fire from heaven to burn them up? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. So they went on to another village. The cost of following Jesus from Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he instructed his disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. 
Then one of the teachers of religious law said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. Another of his disciples said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me now. Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. And from Luke, As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. He said to another person, Come, follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, Yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus teaches openly at the temple. But after his brothers left for the festival, Jesus also went, though secretly, staying out of public view. The Jewish leaders tried to find him at the festival and kept asking if anyone had seen him. There was a lot of grumbling about him among the crowds. Some argued he's a good man, but others said he's nothing but a fraud who deceives the people. But no one had the courage to speak favorably about him in public, for they were afraid of getting in trouble with the Jewish leaders. Then, midway through the festival, Jesus went up to the temple and began to teach. The people were surprised when they heard him. How does he know so much when he hasn't been trained, they asked. So Jesus told them, My message is not my own. It comes from God who sent me. Anyone who wants to do the will of God will know whether my teaching is from God or is merely my own. Those who speak for themselves want glory only for themselves, but a person who seeks to honor the one who sent him speaks truth, not lies. Moses gave you the law, but none of you obeys it. In fact, you are trying to kill me. The crowd replied, you're demon possessed. Who's trying to kill you? Jesus replied, I did one miracle on the Sabbath and you were amazed. But you work on the Sabbath, too, when you obey Moses' law of circumcision. Actually, this tradition of circumcision began with the patriarchs long before the law of Moses. For if the correct time for circumcising your son falls on the Sabbath, you go ahead and do it so as not to break the law of Moses. So why should you be angry with me for healing a man on the Sabbath? Look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly. Is Jesus the Messiah? Some of the people who lived in Jerusalem started to ask each other, isn't this the man they are trying to kill? But here he is speaking in public and they say nothing to him. Could our leaders possibly believe that he is the Messiah? But how could he be? For we know where this man comes from. When the Messiah comes, he will simply appear. No one will know where he comes from. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he called out, yes, you know me and you know where I come from, but I'm not here on my own. The one who sent me is true and you don't know him. But I know him because I come from him and he sent me to you. Then the leaders tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him because his time had not yet come. Many among the crowds at the temple believed in him. After all, they said, would you expect the Messiah to do more miraculous signs than this man has done? When the Pharisees heard that the crowds were whispering such things, they and the leading priests sent temple guards to arrest Jesus. But Jesus told them, I will be with you only a little longer. Then I will return to the one who sent me. You will search for me, but not find me. And you cannot go where I'm going. The Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement. Where is he planning to go, they asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. What does he mean when he says, you will search for me, but not find me. And you cannot go where I'm going. Jesus promises living water. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit, who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Division and Unbelief When the crowds heard him say this, some of them declared, surely this man is the prophet we've been expecting. Others said, he is the Messiah. Still others said, but he can't be. Will the Messiah come from Galilee? For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where King David was born. So the crowd was divided about him. Some even wanted him arrested, but no one laid a hand on him. 
When the temple guards returned without having arrested Jesus, the leading priests and Pharisees demanded, why didn't you bring him in? We have never heard anyone speak like this, the guards responded. Have you been led astray too? The Pharisees mocked. Is there a single one of us rulers or Pharisees who believes in him? This foolish crowd follows him, but they are ignorant of the law. God's curse is on them. Then Nicodemus, the leader who had met with Jesus earlier, spoke up. Is it legal to convict a man before he has given a hearing? He asked. They replied, are you from Galilee too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophet ever comes from Galilee. Then the meeting broke up and everybody went home. That is day 15 in chronological order. Let's pray. Jesus, as we're hearing this in this order, it just feels the temperature rising. Like you can feel the the anger and the hate and the contention just rising. And so because we know where the story goes, we know that this is nearing the climax of the story. But man, I, I just, I feel it in my belly today. This like how different this feels as people in Jerusalem are starting to be angry and vocally angry and wanting to kill you. And so, Jesus, I just thank you that you still walked into places where you weren't welcome because of the people that you did love there and and the ways that people hated you and loved you. And you just disrupted everyone, Jesus. <laughs> I like that about you. And so it, even in our own lives today, when we're given a chance um, to stand with you, would we do it? Would we do it whatever that looks like in our lives? We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.